I'm going to touch a little bit about what you call the five principles of communication. You've already pointed out, but particularly principle number five, it's all about the relationships because that's an underlying theme in your book over and over again. How important are relationships to the work that we do as pediatricians? In a world where I think whether it's due to COVID or not, I, I saw a recent study that said 43% of people between the ages of 18 and 36 stated that they felt that they can get a diagnosis using chat, GPT, and Google just as accurately and going to their physician. Okay. So that says a lot. Now, whether that's COVID or not, I don't know, but I see it in my practice and I'm sure you see it in your practice. There is a distrust out there of the physicians, right or wrong there. And medicine to me is about the human connection or the relationship between you having your patient. I do a lot of work on physician burnout as the wellness director of the NCPS. And if you really look down on why we became doctors, the easy answer is to help people, right? But that's not why we're doctors, that's what we do. Because you could have helped people by being a fireman. You could help people by being a police officer. You could help people by being a multimillionaire and donating money to Nicholas Children's. There's a lot of ways of doing that. So why did we do it? We did, did it because deep down inside, if you really look at it, our why, as Simon Sinek would say, is cherish those relationships. So when you have a bunch of charts that need to be dictated. You have all this extra stuff that's weighing on you. But when you close the door to the exam room, that is your time to enjoy with that patient. And so we are able to form a relationship with a patient by being a genuine person, by how you smile, different ways of smiling. And one of the things that I'm fighting is that I get a lot of people to say, it's hard for an ED doctor to form a relationship, it's hard for a neonatologist or a newborn. You can build trust by coming in, forming that relationship with the patient, by the way you sit down, by the way you smile, by the way you're not feeling rushed, making them feel rushed, talking about something personal, sharing something, if the person's wearing a Yankees hat, talk about the Yankees for two minutes before you get into it. Think about this. If you were in France, a country, and you were in the hospital and no one spoke English, you'd be really scared until somebody came in and said, hey. How are you? Where from the United States are you? I'm from Florida. And so that's the relationship that we can. And I've proven it over and over again. You can form a relationship and find commonality is the word that you're looking for with anybody. It doesn't matter what race they are, ethnicity, where their socioeconomic background is. And we do these little exercises where I'll flash a, a room, a hospital room or a treatment room or a family uh, up on a screen for three seconds shut it off and then say, okay, George, tell me one thing about that room that you can relate to when it may be donuts in the corner of the room, or it may be bright, shiny sneakers or running shoes, whatever it is, you can do it. If you form that relationship, not only will it help you with your patient experience scores, which we have shown by proving 60%, it'll help you build your practice. It'll stop you, as George said, from getting uh, sued in many cases. And so it's really about forming that relationship. And that doesn't only help the patients, it'll help your own well-being. It you know what will decrease physician burnout. I think this relationship thing is something that's entertained by people like you guys, us older generation doctors. The younger kids, I don't know, they seem to have this, they're a patient, I have a job, uh, this is a medical record. Is that something that's taught or they grew up with, or I don't know where it is, but I'm seeing the relationship going away. That you see it today, people go out to dinner and everybody's got their nose buried on the cell phone. They're not building relationships with each other. That's why we have such problems. But for instance, as soon as I get off this podcast, I'm giving a lecture to the uh, on incoming first year medical students for Quinnipiac medical school. I do it every year for them. And we actually show my TED talk, they show my TED talk. And then we talk about that human connection and how important that relationship is. I think we need to get to them that early. What medicine has totally 
confuse people is that they have confused the word information and the word communication. And we have a group of people coming up who think that communicating is providing accurate information. And I will say to them, then I would say, for instance, Herb, what, what was your main goal for that diabetic uh, talk? 